Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. We're here to promote the Brabant, uh, Brabant Horse as an association. Uh, a heritage breed originated over in Europe. Um, a lot of people don't understand what the Brabant really is as a descendant horse or ancestor horse per se of today's draft horses in northern northern America so we're here basically to um, bring the horse to the public show them what the horse is bred for and and have a little fun doing it Brabant Association board member Tom Schmidt of Wadena, Minnesota is mowing hay with Tally and Tessie, both three-quarter crossbred Brabant Belgian horses. Tom and other members of the American Brabant Association gathered at the Medford, Wisconsin farm of Jason and Katrina Julian in early August 2014 for a weekend of visiting, working their horses, and showing them to the public. The American Brabant, so named to distinguish it from the American Belgian horse, is known by a variety of names depending on the country. Called the European Belgian overseas, the ancestors for this breed come from what is now called Belgium during the 1700s, when a large horse was needed for warfare and to pull carriages. Other draft horse breeds also developed from this common ancestor, but in central Belgium, where a heavier horse more suited to agriculture was needed, the Brabant originated. The modern American Belgian is taller, leggier, and much lighter bodied with longer back than the modern European Belgian. The modern American Belgian has almost no feathering on the lower legs and has considerably thinner legs than the modern European Belgian. The color favored in the U.S. is chestnut with white points. They're not really prevalent here in the Midwest yet, but we're trying to make that happen. Yeah. There's province all over the country, uh, Washington State, California, and thereabouts, but the numbers out there are not near as big as they are in the East. Here we see an example of both an American Belgian mare, Molly, on the right, or the driver's left, and a half Brabant, half Belgian gelding called Abraham beside her. Notice the differences in body type, leg feathering, and color between the two. Tim and Tom both told me they like using horses with a percentage of both American and European Belgian breeding. For myself, I find that the percentage ones are, they're more suitable for what I do. I mean, people that just want to go for a ride once a month or every six months, a purebred is a lot more calmer, quieter horse and uh, like something with a little bit, a little bit of pep and uh, if you cross them with the American one, you, you get both. You get the good head on them and something that uh, you can uh, drive and do field work and get something done.
For almost 40 years, Rural Heritage Magazine has helped readers borrow from yesterday to do the work of today. The magazine is packed with stories and information about farming and logging with draft animal power, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. If you or someone you know wants to run a self-sufficient, diversified family farm, or just learn how to make a weekend hobby farm more productive, Rural Heritage Magazine is a smart choice. Articles cover a wide range of interesting and useful topics and are written by people living on the land doing the work they write about. A one-year subscription is $34.95 for six issues, 24% off the newsstand price. Sign up for two years and save even more. Order online at www.ruralheritage.com or by calling 319-362-3027. That's www.ruralheritage.com or 319-362-3027. them for just about anything. You can ride them, I know there's people that ride them and drive them, and parades, the farm work, the, you name it, they do it. Originally being bred for farm work and logging, yeah. um, they're starting to establish, and Jason's really came through with his legacy lo horse logging uh, this past winter. Um, they excelled tremendously in the woods, skidding timber for low impact logging. Um, they can get into areas where big machinery cannot. And a lot of small acreage landowners don't want all this big equipment in their woods. They don't want all the young saplings torn down and, and damaged and all this. So we bring horses in and and uh, things aren't torn up as bad. The, the impact on the forest itself is not near as bad as... Uh, disposition brings safety. And that's something we absolutely have to stride for all the time not whether we're working on the farm or working in the woods because both are very dangerous occupations at times and uh, the horse with the docile quiet disposition does not being as fast a mover as fast a, uh, whatever um, they just they make things a whole lot accept things a lot better they than accept that. things yeah. thank you yeah.
you have experience with other breeds of draft horse before you got in with the Brabants? Yes, I've, I've had a little bit of everything all the time, mainly Belgians, but I've had Bertrands and Shires and Suffolk, but uh, Belgian, uh, this here for me just seems like, and I always like the Roan, that's where the Brabant, you get all different colors, the Blue Roan, the Bay Roans, and some blacks even, and, uh, you get a little bit of everything. Now you're from Wadena, is yeah, that right? Wadena. What do you do with your horses there? I, it's a hobby for me. I work off the place, but I, uh, I do cut some hay with them and mow and uh, you know put up hay and uh, I plow snow in the winter with them. You know, I have a snow plow that works really well and uh, uh, give sleigh rides, hay rides, and do one some... of the issues that people do in work by themselves, particularly if they're not doing it full time all the time is that sometimes it gets dangerous doing stuff by yourself. Yeah, I, Is the Brabant better suited for working by yourself? I'd have to say yes. I really would have to say yes. It's It stems back to what we were talking about before about the docile disposition. Hmm. They're more accepting of anything that happens around them. Uh, once they figure out what's going on, and it's not going to hurt them, it's not going to bother them. Well, we talked a little bit about why they're better um, suited to some work um, in terms of the utility of it. Um, what attracts you to them? Um, like their looks, for example. The, the looks, the docile disposition, uh, because they're hobby, they're, some of us are, are hobbyists with them. We are in the public eye quite a bit for parades and, and whatnot. And this happens uh, quite often, especially in a parade environment. You'll have little kids dart out in front of them, okay? Uh, I've seen accidents happen. I have never seen an accident happen with a Brabant yet. Not to say that it won't, but never seen, never have seen it yet. Is that the way you guys mostly pronounce it, is Brabant? Or do you say Brabant? So I say Brabant, so okay. I usually say. Sure, right. I just never know what to say. Um, I guess there's several different pronunciations. Yeah. I don't sure, know. sure. Um, and is the fact that they're a little bit more of a, a heritage breed, a little bit less bred out, like um, the modern Percher and the modern Belgian tends to be more of a carriage horse now than it, mm -hmm. than it used to be. Is that attractive? Yes, that's a, very, that, much, yeah, very the, much so. The shorter, more blockier, more the old farm working team. That's what they're mainly, that's what I like about them. popularity of the other five major draft horse breeds is just leaps and bounds over the top of the Brabants. Yeah. And the Brabants at one time were considered endangered. And why? I It's hard to say at times. I understand that over in Europe that uh, they're bred for meat. Okay, that's their way of thinking. That's their way of doing things. It's not, not an issue. But here, there's still some of us like Jason and myself and Tom, that uh, want to keep the heritage of the older dairy farming going, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm not a dairy farmer, I work off the farm, but uh, I was born and raised on a farm. And working horses comes second nature. It's just like my right arm. Uh, when you're working horses, it brings a relaxation that just is uncomparable to anything else. 
We are such a small organization now in the United States that uh, we're accepting new knowledge, new expertise in different fields like photography, uh, computer work, to help out with the certain... To get the word out there. Just to get the word out there. Yeah. Publication and advertising is what this, this association needs, and we're trying to make that happen. Not quite as a main maintainable animal either. They're a lot more easy keeper. Easy, easy keeper. They convert feed very well. Yeah. Um, Jason doesn't feed his horses any grain. I give mine a little bit of grain. Uh, I don't know what Tom's. No, I don't. I have very little grain. That's so really working hard. The right. Yeah. And they can. They're easy. They're economically the the right horse for the job.
This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.